guys, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have a cute card for you guys using this Lawn Fawn Critters at the Dog Park stamp set as well as the Once Upon a Time Prince 6x6 Paper Pack by Echo Park. I'm going to begin with my Copic coloring and I wanted to shade this dog to look like a boxer. So I've pulled out some E's. I'm using E23, E25, and E27 for the main portion of his body. And I just want to um, draw in some areas where I can leave it white so that he can have those little bits of accent on his fur. So I'm doing that with my lightest shade, the E23, and then just filling in all the areas that are going to be brown with an all over coat. I usually tend to do my coloring darkest to lightest when I'm coloring just a regular image, but in cases like this where I'm actually mapping out different colorings on a critter, um, I do usually go lightest to darkest so that I can um, correct any mistakes I make or just kind of work uh, slowly and build up the color so it doesn't get out of hand. So now I'm going to take my E25 and just lay in my shadowed areas, just kind of figuring out where I want those to go, kind of doing along the back side of his legs and around his ears and a little bit up from his neck to the back of his body, kind of leaving some highlighted areas right there on the top of his rump since that's where the sun would hit the strongest. And then once I'm happy with that, I'm going to go in with my E27 and just really increase the depth so that I'll have a lot of dimension. So I'm just going right over top of the E25. Then I'm going to switch back to the E25 and kind of start to blend that in, just catching the edge of the E27 and drawing that color out a bit so that I'll have a nice and smooth transition when it's time to go ahead and blend everything back together. And I'm trying to turn my paper as I'm working. I, I normally, when I'm coloring off camera, I always turn my paper to um, get the best angle, but um, I try not to move it so much for the camera, but I've had a couple comments lately that my hand is blocking the coloring since I am left-handed. So I'm trying to turn the paper and see if that works better for you guys. And uh, you can let me know what you think about that. So now I'm just going back in with my lightest shade and filling in the rest, just really making sure to um, color in little circles and get that transition really nice and smooth. I wanted to add some darker patches to the face so that I have that traditional boxer look. So I'm going in with my E47 and I'm just gonna kind of sketch that out right around his eye and jawline there and I'll just go ahead and fill that in completely. And I'm gonna add a little bit to his muzzle as well, and then just make sure to mirror that on the other side of his face. There's barely a sliver there, but I just wanted to make sure to add that in. And then I'm gonna take my E49 and just add a little bit on the outside of his muzzle just for some definition and fill in his nose, and then I'll just blend that out with the E47 again. Because I added that darker color, his eye kind of got lost, so I'm just going to take a black memento marker and just draw that right back in. I decided to go with a red tennis ball to add a nice pop of color to my little scene that I'll be creating and also to match the pattern paper that I'll be using. So I'm using my favorite red combo, which is R29, R39, and R59, and I'm just doing darkest to lightest since it's a super small, quick little area. And there's a closer look at our little boxer. Super cute. So I'm actually making a get well soon card, and I thought it would be fun to give this little guy a cone as if he would just come back from the vet's office. So I've got a piece of vellum here. This is just cheap vellum from Hobby Lobby. And I'm taking a pencil and just roughing in an outline of how I want that to be. And I'm making sure to do both the outer portion that will be visible on the front side of his face, but also the part that's going to wrap around on the other side. And you'll see why in just a minute. 
Now I'm going to take a Sharpie fine point marker, and this is because this does not smear on vellum. I first tried it with the Memento marker and it did smear immediately since vellum is a slicker surface. So now I'm just going to take my Sharpie and trace over my pencil lines. And I'm trying to make them about the same thickness of the stamped image, but it really doesn't matter too much. I mean, it is a hand-drawn item on a handmade card, so you don't need to be perfect. But I'm going to finish that up, and then I'm going to grab a craft knife, and I'm just going to guide that blade right along the inside of that middle line, just making sure to cut all the way through. It's really easy to do since the vellum is really thin. And then I will grab my Cutter B scissors and just cut out my little dog cone. Just cutting away really carefully. I'm leaving just a very slight edge since the um, stamp also has a little bit of a white edge. I thought it would just match better. And now I'm going to take an eraser and erase my pencil lines. And this is how I'm going to attach the cone to the dog. Since the vellum is see-through, I can't use glue on the outside, but I can attach it on the inside where it wraps around his head. So I'm just going to make sure that I have it exactly where I want it. And then I'll just flip him over and add a little bit of post-it tape to hold that into place. And he's all ready to be glued onto my card. By the way, there is no die to match the little tennis ball from Critters at the Dog Park, but there is a die for the coconut from Life is Good that is the exact same size and works perfectly. Just a quick tip for you. So now I've taken a piece of white cardstock and die cut that with the new Say Cheese Again die. And I'm going to take the Polaroid portion and pop that in my Misty so that I can stamp my sentiment. And I'm using Lawn Fawn Deep Sea Ink to stamp that down. I'm going to ink that up twice to get a really good impression so that I have a nice, bold, and crisp sentiment. And that is from the Get Well Soon mini stamp set from Lawn Fawn. And there's a look at that right there. While I have my Misty out, I'm going to go ahead and stamp the inside of my card. And I'm using just a white basic note card with a top fold. This is a standard four and a quarter by five and a half tall card. And I'm going to ink up the little doxy from Critters at the Dog Park, as well as a sentiment that says, I rough you, which I just thought would be really cute. So this little guy is running to greet his friend um, as he's come home from the vet. And I used Moonstone ink to stamp the inside. Now I've got that white inner portion from my Polaroid and I'm going to cover that in some glue and adhere some pattern paper down right over top of that. I'm going to try to create a little indoor scene and I'm going to add a strip of glue so that I can add this little wood grain piece at the bottom to create a floor. And that is a little bit longer than I need it to be because I wanted to be able to adjust but it'll just tuck behind the Polaroid frame. Then I'm going to take a little extra glue, and I'm using Tombow Mono Multi Glue, by the way. That's my favorite glue. And I'm going to add my little boxer over on the right side there. Just have him kind of crouching down there. And then I'll add a dab of glue so that I can add my tennis ball right in front of him. I'll grab my Polaroid frame and make sure that's all going to fit nicely. And then I can just set that whole thing aside. I've got two more sheets of pattern paper from that Once Upon a Time prints collection from Echo Park. And while there are lots of fairy tale themed prints in that set, there's also just lots of primary and bold patterns, um, which I thought would be great for this card. So I'm taking this kind of chevron print and I'm adhering that flat to my card base. And then I'm going to take this red um, diamond print. I believe it's called Harlequin, if I've got that right. And I'm going to add that to the lower portion of my card. Just want to make sure that that frame is going to be positioned where I want it before I adhere that paper down. Then I can grab my Polaroid frame there and just add a little bit more glue to the back of that. And here's where I kind of messed up a bit. I should have added the panel first. 
I'd forgotten that I left that wood grain panel a bit longer thinking I was just going to tuck it behind and I didn't trim that down to fit. So um, I went ahead and adhered this down and then I'm going to add some glue to the center and this bottle is getting pretty low but I like to use every drop and uh, so I'm just going to squeeze that glue in the center and then I'm going to realize that it's not going to fit. So I'm going to have to peel up that Polaroid a bit. I tried to tuck it under, but it wasn't really working exactly how I wanted it to. So I just pulled that all back up. That's the great thing about using liquid glue is that you're able to have that little bit of wiggle room before it adheres. And I was able to slip it under and just um, put everything back together carefully as if it never happened. So I wanted to add a little bit of an embellishment, but I didn't want to add glitter or anything too girly because this card is really unisex and I wanted to keep it as such in case it needed to go to a boy or a girl. So I'm just grabbing these enamel dots that I had in my drawer. These are actually from a long ago Christmas collection by Teresa Collins, but the color palette was right for what I needed. So I'm just going to add a sprinkle of those here and there. And I love that these are on the acetate so that you're able to kind of move it around before you commit. And I always just set them down gently until I'm sure. So I added three over to the left of the Polaroid and then I'm gonna add two below it. And then I thought about adding one more, but I decided that it was going to be just too much. So I left it with that, pressed them down into place. And that is going to complete our card for today. There's another peek at the inside with our cute little doxy there and our sentiment. I think this card came out super cute. I love it when you have a vision in your head and it just works out on the card exactly how you thought. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Here's an extra couple videos you may also be interested in and you can always click on my photo to subscribe to my channel if you have not done that already. Have a great day. Bye bye.